Earlier this week, ladies and gentlemen, I put out there the possibility that it might be a wise thing to do to one day, maybe on a Friday, take calls from listeners who are under 30, 30 or under. They could be conservative, could be liberal, but just to get their perspective. I have since stumbled across stuff in the news it once again makes me realize just how prescient and forward thinking I am. There is a there's a poll out. Well, I don't I don't want to if I start telling you about it now, I'll get into it now and I want to I want to save it for a little bit later, but there's there's polling data out there that shows on the Republican side that 18 to 24 year olds despise Trump. They despise him. Whereas Republican voters over 45 or 50 literally love Trump. And exploring the differences, you know, why would 18 to 24, 18 to 30 year old Republicans who otherwise, I mean, they like what Trump's doing policy wise, but they hate the guy. And the poll was done under the auspices of should should some other Republicans seek the White House in 2020? And an incredible number, 70 some odd percent of Republican voters under 30 said yes. It may be even over 80%. I'll have to con consult the poll. But it gave me a couple of ideas about what we could do to try to flesh this out here on the program. That is coming. Now, there were two people talking at the same time. I thought I heard. Anyway, greetings and welcome back. El Rushbo at 800-282-2882. I... Folks, I, 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 I had not intended for you young pups uh, to start calling in here, but man, you can't wait. You know, I start talking about the polling data I saw on the differences in Republican voters 18 to 30 and 45 and over. And I thought, yeah, we need to set up a day down the road where we talk about this. But here they are. I mean, they have stormed the phone lines and they want to weigh in on this. So now I've got to jump into this a little sooner than I had planned to. And by that, I mean my, my, my thoughts are not fully baked and settled here before I get into this. So we're, uh, I guess we're going to be improv and, and flying by the seat of our pants on some of this stuff. So what I'll do here, I will, I will use callers uh, as they are usually used, as, as uh, uh, opportunities to inspire reaction and thought, transition, and so forth. Uh, as well as perhaps even be entertained by them. Sometimes that happens to mine. Okay, here we start on the phones with uh, with Zach in Manhattan. Zach, I'm glad you called. It says you're 29 years old, right? That's right, Rush. Thanks for having me. You bet. So what's up? Why did you call? What what was it I said that made you want to call in and here and discuss it? Uh, well, what you let off with, uh, you know, the fact that uh, the majority of, of people under 30, and you know, regardless of uh, political affiliation, but even conservatives are... Uh, you know, uh, apparently it's news to me, but uh, anti-Trump. And, um, you know, I think that the reason for this is, is kind of twofold, but uh, the main part is that, that uh, you know, my generation, my peers, get their news from selective sources. It's no longer Fox versus CNN even, or you can flip back and forth on the channel to get two different talking points, two different viewpoints. Um, it's coming direct from their Reddit feed, their Facebook feed, uh, you know, sites like Vox. And, and uh, I think we've gotten to this point that, um, it's just too easy for you to actively seek out what you want to hear to reaffirm what you think is going on. And, um, you know, all of that stuff is overwhelmingly anti-Trump uh, for one reason or another. But I, I think that's the main uh, reason why people in my age group all right, now uh, are pulling that, this way. Okay, great, great. That's fascinating. All of that is undeniable. But I think it goes further than that. I think there are additional reasons let me let me give you the polling data that 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 made me pull up short and look at this this is polling that's actually published at at vox i'm sorry axios media which is a millennial explainer website it's a it's a website where it assumes its readers don't know anything so it reports the quote unquote news and then a paragraph titled what does it mean or what it means and then the next paragraph what could happen next. So it assumes that millennial readers are clueless. It's actually a marketing thing that they're trying to set their website apart from others. They published a poll. The poll is uh, Survey Monkey. Do you want another Republican to challenge President Trump for the party's nomination in 2020? 
42% of the sample said yes. 56% of the sample said no. These are Republicans, people who are Republican or lean Republican. There aren't any liberals in this particular questions results. Okay, so this is strictly Republican, lean Republican. Uh, how conservative they are is not specified, but we'll throw that in. So overall, 56% of the Republican sample say they want another Republican. 56 they do not want another Republican to challenge Trump. 42% say they do. 18 to 24 Republicans, 82% want somebody to challenge Trump. They hate Trump. 18% of 18 to 24s think Trump is okay. That is a huge split. And while it may well be that it is the news sources they they use to inform themselves, it has to be more than that. It has to be. And that's what we're going to explore. Here's a never demographic, 2534. 2534, 57% want Trump to be challenged, 40% don't. But if you go to 55-64, for example, 66% do not want anybody else but Trump. 45 to 54, 63% want nobody else. They want Trump. So basically, 18 to, let's say, 18 to 34 about 70% of Republicans hate Trump and want him gone. 45 and above, about 68% of Republicans like Trump. That is a huge generational divide. Major. So why does it exist? That's what we're going to explore. Right, now, look, some of the explanation for this surely is social media, and some of it is uh, straight drive-by media, but much of it is cultural, and much of it has to do with the fact that these people are so young that they haven't lived through anything like their parents or grandparents have, dealing with liberalism, I mean. Greetings and welcome back. Uh, Great to have you. 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. The email address is rushbo at eibnet.us. We'll get back to the the uh, uh, split here in support and hatred. By the way, this, it's not, let's just keep it at dislike. But this, by the way, I should give you a heads up. This split where 18 to 24-year-old Republican voters want Trump gone. They hate him. They want somebody else running for the presidency in 2020. Only 18%, according to SurveyMonkey, only 18% like Trump and want him to stay as president. But then when you get to the 45 to 54, 55 to 64, it's the exact opposite. Uh, Baby boomers and their kids, they have no problem with Trump, not like the youth do. And so what's the reason? It's not just enough to say, well, the youth get their news from Facebook and Twitter and the drive-bys. It's more than that. But the never-Trumpers are using this to further their belief that Trump needs to be sent packing under the belief that, why, these young people, they're the future. And so the the never-Trumpers are assigning all kinds of virtue to these young Republicans who hate Trump. And I want to share with you some of that as a way of further informing yourself on what this is and how it's going to be used. Because everybody wants the youth. Advertisers want the youth. Everybody wants their future. They haven't yet firmly made up their minds on a lot of things. They're still open, flexible, supposedly. So everybody is in pursuit of the millennial generation to one degree or another, as opposed to When you hit 40, 45, you're pretty much made up your mind on things you like and don't like, people you like and don't like. And by the time you hit 50, nobody cares about you demographically. 
And when you're 55, <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're, you're a placeholder. But what you think about things is of very little interest to opinion makers, advertisers, marketers. It's just the way it is. It's always been that. Well, there are, of course, exceptions. And I'm one of them. I'm 67. Jeez, 67 now. And, of course, people still desperately care what I think and still desperately want to know what I think. But I am an outlier. I am an exception to the rule. So we'll circle back to Let me head back to the phones. Look, we're, we're going to – when I go back to the phones, we're going back to young people calling in about – this disparity in support for Trump, born of demographic difference. And that's the nature of this program. We hopscotch all over the place. There's no formula governing how we do it here. We just, we, we go where the passion takes us. We go where my desire to talk about things takes us. And so since I need a break, I'm going to go to the phones. And whatever's on the phones determines what we're going to talk about next. And so... We have a 20-year-old from Cleveland. His name is Nick, and I'm glad you called, glad you waited. Uh, welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just want to say uh, thank you for uh, everything you do. Uh, my boss, he actually got me to listen to you, and I really wasn't a Trump supporter until I started listening to you. And I just want to thank you for that. Well, you're, you're, you're welcome. Can I ask you a couple questions about this? Yes. There are no wrong answers. I'm taking, think of me as taking a survey, but you don't have to lie to me. Nothing you okay. say is going to be used against you, and, you know, we're not going to put up billboards in Cleveland talking about Nick. Why did you support Trump? Why did you, why did, no, why did you not like Trump until you started listening to me? What was it about Trump you didn't like? Tell me the truth. There's the, no wrong answer. I really want to know. It was the fake media. I believed in it. You believed what the media was saying about him? Yes, I did. Well, what about times when you saw Trump without the media? You saw his his announcement that he was running. Uh, you, you saw what he said about John McCain, about he doesn't respect military people who get captured. I mean, what, what did you think of Trump individually, regardless of what the fake media was saying? Did you like him, not like him? Did you think he was a buffoon? What, what did you think? I just didn't like him. Um... Just what everyone was saying, every every person out there, I uh, just didn't like him because of it. And then I started listening to you, and uh, you changed my whole output on it. Okay. Well, I, I, that is heartwarming. That's inspiring. That's comforting. And that that's the kind of thing, Nick, old buddy, old pal, that keeps me going. But let me tell you why I'm probing. Thank, thanks, Nick, for the call. The reason I'm probing this is because running across this poll here, it's amazing how things work. I found a, a, a piece written by a never-Trumper at National Review on this poll. His name is David French. He's a very smart guy. David French is the guy that Bill Kristol suggested run for president instead of Trump. Near the end of the primary process, when it was clear that none of the Republicans, not Jeb, not Ted Cruz... Rand Paul, John Kasich, when none of them were going to beat Trump, Bill Kristol tried to save the day for the Never Trumpers by nominating David French. French had no idea was coming. French didn't want to run for president. He's a he's a uh, he's a writer, among other things, in his career at National Review. I've also had. We'll get to what he says about this in a second. I also had an email today from a friend who is the parent of millennials, and he's constantly observing them as though they are laboratory rats. He's trying to understand why they don't like Trump and what can be made, uh, how that can be made to change. He has learned the way they speak. He very early picked up on the importance of the word sustainability, which is almost a biblical term to millennials. If something isn't sustainable, they're not going to support it. Millennials believe that climate change is literally destroying this planet. And as many more of them than you would believe think that the Earth may be uninhabitable by the time they reach 65. It's a larger number than you would believe. And that's where the word sustainable comes in. Any 
potential policy solution must have sustainability, meaning it will continue to work. And if it doesn't, then they are automatically opposed to it. So this guy sends me a email today. He says, Rush, Trump is educating millennials on the joys of capitalism and free markets and limited government. He sent me this independent of, uh, he didn't know that I was going to focus on this topic today. He just sent me this note. He said, Rush, I think the tax cut bill is helping young skulls full of mush much better understand economics and civics from a conservative point of view. And this is important because these subjects are not taught in, in most public schools. Economics, civics, from a conservative standpoint, are simply not taught. And he, he, he thinks that soon a lot of millennials are going to learn about corruption and how authoritarian police states behave, and they're going to have an awakening and realize that their previous devotion to socialism is an automatic loser because being exposed to this rapidly growing economy with rapidly increasing prosperity for many more millions of Americans than has happened in the last eight years, it's going to wake all of them up. He says, the final lesson will be in the subject of propaganda, the politicization of the media by those who want to steer your pursuit of happiness on to the nearest off-ramp. He tries to get tricky with words, but his basic point is that he thinks real life is going to wake up some of these millennials and they're going to realize that what they've been taught is bogus. And see, that's, I'm not, I'm not so sure because this survey monkey poll, which again says that 82% of 18 to 24 year olds want another Republican to challenge Trump. They don't want Trump to be on the ticket in 2020. A lot of it isn't policy related. They simply hate Trump's personality. They're embarrassed by Trump's personality. I don't know what percentage of that is brought on by their exposure to mainstream media, Facebook, social media, probably some. But this gets even more interesting when you delve deeper. When you compare the 18 to 24-year-old's view of Trump, the individual and the man, versus people who are 45 and older and their impression of Trump, you have a wide divergence with very little in common. And what you find is that the 18 to 24 year olds simply aren't old enough. They haven't lived long enough to understand things like people who've lived 20 and 30 years longer than they have understand. They don't know the history of the Clintons. They don't know the history of the liberal Democrats and immigration. They don't know any of these things. They don't know the history of the Republican Party as a, as a party that caves. They don't know any of this. All of this is brand new to them. And remember, folks, there's a thing about human behavior that is undeniable. Most people's historical perspective begins with the day they were born. What I mean by that is, if something happened years and years before you were born, you don't care. You aren't alive. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. What's important is what's happened when you've been alive. That's your frame of reference. And that, I think, plays a huge role in this 18 to 24-year-olds. And this is a survey of all Republicans, but there's no Democrats in this survey. 82% of them want Trump gone. Doesn't matter about his issues. Doesn't matter whether he's right on this or wrong on that. The issues don't matter. And we'll delve into why as we keep going here. And back to the phones we go to Bradley in Ilkhart, Indiana. He's 30. Great to have you, Bradley. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing, Russ? Fine and dandy. Thank you. So, you know, I, I wanted to call in today. You had said that you wanted to hear about why uh, millennials support Trump and, you know, about the polls. No, 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 not, no. See, we're getting we're getting ahead of the game here. I really didn't mean for 
the calls to happen today because I haven't set this up yet. What I'm really looking for here is millennials who are Republicans who don't like Trump. And if you started out, do do you like it? But wait, don't hang up yet. Do you like Trump? There's no wrong answer here to any of my questions. You a Trump supporter or not? 100%. Okay. Were you ever not a Trump supporter? No. From the moment he came out, I pretty much was a supporter. Okay. And so let's get back then to your call. What was the, what, why, why were you calling? What did you want to tell me? Well, I just, you know, I wanted to express my support for Trump and, uh, and basically that. Basically that. Okay. What about, what about your friends? Do you have friends your age that are also Republicans who may not like Trump? Um, I, I don't have friends that are Republicans that don't like Trump, but I do have um, some family members and friends that don't like him. But are they Republican? No, they're Democrat. Okay. So the, the key here is Republicans. The reason, folks, the reason for this is, we kind of jumped the gun here, the never Trumpers are every bit as hell-bent on getting rid of Trump as the deep state is, and they are focusing on this poll here as encouragement, as reason to feel optimistic that we can get Trump off the ballot in 2020. And so the the never-Trumpers are ready, getting ready to assign all kinds of virtue to these 18 to 24-year-old Republicans that don't like Trump, as in we need to be listening to them. They are the future of the party. And if they don't like Trump, and by the way, they don't like Trump for moral reasons, that makes it even better because the never Trumpers hate Trump because he's not moral. And he doesn't he doesn't uh, fulfill the the uh, so-called conservative virtue requirement. He is an embarrassment. He's a slug. And so. This is a godsend poll for the never Trumper community that let's face it, they haven't had a whole lot of success here. The never Trumpers uh, failed. And so they are seeing this polling data as a sign that they might be able to have a revival because they still want to get rid of Trump as bad as they ever did. To hell with all this great economic news. This is the most maddening, amazing thing. We have people on our side willing to sabotage their lifelong hell beliefs just because they don't like the guy who is president when their beliefs are finally being implemented. It is crazy. Welcome back. Hi, folks. Now, let me set this up again. Do you want another Republican to challenge Trump for the party's nomination in 2020? A survey of Republicans by SurveyMonkey. It was published at Axios, the millennial website. And overall, I don't know the size of the sample. It's significant, though. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like only 300 people. It's a significant sample. Of the total, and this is Republicans, 56 percent are satisfied with Trump and don't want anybody else. 42 percent do want another Republican to challenge Trump. But when you get to 18 to 24, 82 percent of Republicans 18 to 24 hate Trump and want him gone and want another Republican on the ballot. Only 18 percent of 18 to 24s do not. 25, 34, 57 percent don't like Trump. 40% do. 35, 44, 58% don't like Trump. 42% do. You have to get to 45 and over to get to 65% like Trump and don't want him replaced. So what explains this? What is it about 18 to 24 year olds that make them not like Donald Trump at all and want him gone. Now, for the purposes of this discussion, we're going to accept the polling data as accurate. As you know, that's up for grabs. I'm I'm dicey on polling data. Too many of them are wrong too often amidst some that are correct. So you never know which one to trust. But for the sake of the discussion, we're going to assume this is true. So I happened to stumble across 
a post at the corner, National Review by David French, who uh, Bill Kristol had nominated to be the Republican nominee instead of Trump. He, I think he lives in Tennessee, if I'm not mistaken. And he is, uh, I don't know, a teacher, I don't know what all he does, but he, he, he writes for National Review, and he is an accredited conservative, and I think he would not have a problem being called Never Trump. Not certain about that, but I think that's accurate. And he thinks that there are four reasons to explain this. Four reasons to explain why 82% of 18 to 24 year olds don't want Trump. First, he says older Republicans had decades to get to know Trump and decades to get to know Hillary. Trump built a brand centered around the notion that he was one of the nation's greatest businessmen. It would take far more than a few months of negative media coverage to dislodge an impression created by years and years of Trump in the spotlight. And, of course, this is what I meant when I said some of these people just haven't lived long enough to have enough knowledge of Trump, to know who he is. And so who he is has been determined by the media they read or their own uh, native personal reactions to him, whereas their parents and grandparents have known Trump all their lives, and uh, he's something totally different to them because he's been around. He's a star. He's a celebrity. He's taken seriously. Sometimes he's not. Other times people know when to take him seriously, when not to. Young people don't. Now, French says you can easily meet many, many older Republicans who did not hold their nose and vote for Trump. They like him. They've liked him for years. At the same time, these older Republicans have been fighting Hillary Clinton for 25 years, longer than these 18 to 24s have been alive Older Republicans have been faced with all of the negatives and all the frustrations and all of the failures in trying to stop the Clintons. To younger Republicans, she was just another Democrat politician. They didn't know she was. I remember making this point all during the campaign. And I thought what would happen is once all this sexual harassment stuff about Bill Clinton was learned, that it would redound negatively to Hillary in this age group. Because this age group, you know what, they despise sexual harassment. They despise all these things the left has been pushing. And my theory was once they learn who Bill Clinton was, it's going to be a shock. And it's going to it's going to redound negative to Hillary. I don't know. It, I think it did some. But to older Republicans, Hillary was the embodiment of Democrat corruption. She was the symbol of everything that had to be opposed. She was the symbol of everything that was dangerous and wrong and threatening to the country, to their beliefs, to the future of their kids. She had to lose. Defeating Hillary led to a wave of relief and gratitude for Trump that older Republicans will never forget. But to young people, she was just the latest frumpy liberal Democrat who cared about people. They didn't know anything about her. And the media that they consulted didn't say one word negative about Hillary Clinton. Not a single negative word. Second reason, he thinks, that this disparity exists. And th this gets interesting. He says, younger Republicans have been trained from childhood to see the Republican Party as a party of specific ideas. It is a simple fact that there is a much greater infrastructure for training and teaching young Americans about conservatism than existed when David French was young. That's undeniable. Uh, folks, when you and I were growing up, there wasn't anywhere. There was, if you read National Review, I mean, that was it. There wasn't a conservative media or conservative academia. There wasn't a conservative think tank uh, conglomerate. There was nowhere. Your parents either were or weren't, and you fed off of that. But his point is now that there's 
There's conservative media, there is conservative bloggery, there's conservative websites, conservative college organizations. There is a massive conservative infrastructure that young Republicans can access and learn about conservatism or have it validated. Beginning in high school, politically minded students can attend conferences, immerse themselves in conservative media, in college, all kinds of organizations dedicated to spreading the gospel of limited government, constitutional government. Moreover, for the entire adult lifetime of these young voters, the path to, now get this. Nope, let me take a break. I don't mean to be teasing you, but I, look, I got no choice. It's the clock. But don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay, in addition to the fact that young Republicans have had a conservative infrastructure to learn from, to be exposed to, from high school on, for their entire adult lifetimes, the path to conservative celebrity and power went through proving your adherence to those ideas. For, we're talking about 18 to 24 year olds. His theory is the path to conservative celebrity and power, meaning becoming acknowledged as a genuine conservative um, that makes you a celebrity in your group because you know it, you can explain it, you're persuasive. The path to that went through proving your adherence to conservatism. Trump has no fixed ideological worldview. None. David French says here that it was baffling. It was confusing to 18 to 24-year-old Republicans that Trump could become the darling of Fox News and conservative media. Trump? Wasn't he a quintessential rhino? So David French's view is that Trump's lack of ideology is why 18 to 24-year-old conservatives, one of the four reasons why they reject him as a phony, as a rhino, he's not what they have grown up wanting to be, training to be, or any of that. He is no different to them than you know Mitch McConnell or Bob Michael was to any of us. Not a real conservative. Back in a moment. And we're back. It's great to have you, El Rushbo, and the Excellence in Broadcasting Network. 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program. Now, I, again, remember, I think the Never Trumpers are using this polling data as a as a means to further the, the Never Trump view of Trump. So we have a bunch of 18 to 24 year olds who think Trump's a rhino, not a real conservative. I mean, they've been through conservative training. They've grown up with a conservative infrastructure. And and they have some of them have found conservative celebrity and power. And Trump, he's not a conservative. He's just a rhino. He's all over the map. You can't count on that. And 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 there's also a moral component that I'll get to here in a moment that they think uh, Trump fails and so forth. Uh, but because Trump is not a true conservative, and don't forget, the, the first point here was that adherence to conservative ideology is paramount. It is said here with these 18 to 24-year-olds, if you're not conservative, if you're not a real conservative, if you're halfway, if you're a rhino, they've got no use for you because they've grown up in this infrastructure. Now, this fits the never-Trumper agenda just perfect, because that happens to be what they think. And they haven't succeeded getting rid of Trump. So here comes the polling data, the 18 to 24-year-olds, basically echoing what the never-Trumpers have believed, that Trump's a fraud, he's a pretender. My God, we can't sign on to this guy. This guy rips to shreds everything we've claimed to be. Meanwhile, everything they believe is being implemented, and they can't stand it. Then there's a third element here. Older Republicans felt a greater sense of cultural despair simply because they've lived through the perversion and the destruction of a once great and mighty American culture. As David French writes, look, if you've grown up 
thinking that transsexuals are cool and hip and can be patriots like Chelsea Manning. And if you've grown up, gay marriage is as normal as any other marriage. If you've grown up where the left-wing definition of cultural compassion is one you accept— then Donald Trump is going to offend the hell out of you. But if you happen to be an older GOP voter who's lived through how we got here, lived through the never-ending attacks on conservatism, which these young kids have not lived through, the never-ending attacks on Christianity and religion, which these young kids haven't lived through, older Republican voters have had to, had to watch their cherished morality be chipped away and be told that there is no morality and they don't have any right to define morality for anybody else. The young people have grown up into this culture where there isn't any morality, where you get to define your own. And if you define your own as uh, contained within the the bonds of conservatism, (laughs) then Trump is going to be an even further outlier. But older Republican voters understood that in many cultural conflicts, conservatives weren't just losing. We were losing with remarkable speed. They don't. The young Republican voters have no concept of losing the culture. They have no concept of losing what was a great past. They haven't lived long enough to have lost anything. So to them, Trump is not only an old guy, but he's not a cool old guy. To them, Trump is exactly what they don't want to become. And then you add to the fact that he's not, in their view, a doctrinaire conservative. And they, in their purity, say they can't support. This just happens to fall right in the lap of the Never Trumpers, which is the same case they've been trying to make. But they weren't able to stop Trump. So now I think this poll gives the Never Trumpers hope (laughs) that the 18 to 24 demographic can pick up where the Never Trumpers failed. There's a fourth reason that David French writes to explain why 18 to 24 year olds, 82% of them want Trump gone. Younger conservatives covet the moral high ground, he says. Younger conservatives are more likely to live, work, and learn in hostile ideological territory than older conservatives. Conservative millennials are used to being embattled. They're used to being a minority, especially on college camp I. And it is far, far easier to defend your message when the messenger is a good person. It's a far easier thing to do to defend your conservative message when the conservative messenger is a good person. Now, what this means is, here you have these 18 to 24-year-old conservatives. They've been trained. They've grown up in this conservative infrastructure. They're doctrinaire. And they're trying to sell conservatism to others. And they can't use Trump because they don't respect Trump. They don't even think he's a conservative. And they probably can't use a lot of other conservatives in media because they fail in the same purity test. And so they've got no role models among current Republican leadership. Older voters, by contrast, are so worn out are so fed up, are so beleaguered and angered by years of all of this racism, sexism, homophobia, bigotry allegations that have been made, that they don't care about those charges anymore. All they want to do is punch back twice as hard and cream the hell out of these jerks that have been attempting to besmirch their integrity. And that's the role that Trump serves. Older conservatives fed up for years with being called all these names, lied about, distorted, blasphemed, slandered, libeled, accused of hating and wanting to starve children. They've had it. 
And nobody's fought back against any of that, that they've elected not a single person until Donald Trump. So excuse us if Trump doesn't meet your model of purity, but we've got an opposition to beat. And so far, none of you purists have helped us in one way do it. So you can sit there and romanticize your purity and invest your hopes and dreams in 18 to 24 year olds who haven't lived long enough to appreciate why they should appreciate Trump. The fact is, this people on the left have got to be stopped. Because if they're not, you can wave goodbye to your precious culture. And by the way, so many of you never Trumpers seem to be eager for the one thing that could more quickly destroy this culture than anything, and that's illegal immigration. If we don't get a handle on that seriously, if the de if the Democrats get this dream bill, as they do, you realize the number of millions of people we're talking about here, folks. This isn't seven hundred thousand people we're talking about with the DACA kids or the Dreamers. When you add it all up, what the Democrats want, what Chuck Schumer and these guys want, what Lindsey Graham, the Lindsey Graham Dick Durbin deal, would would provide almost six million people amnesty. Just under the Dreamer program. Now, let me remind you that in 1986, the last time we had an official amnesty to deal with this same kind of problem, we granted amnesty to 2.6 million illegals. And we were told that was it. That was over. No more. We're tightening down the border. We're going to be restrictive. We're going to make sure only people who love this country get in. Now, look, now we're dealing with, what, 12 to 15, maybe millions more that we don't know about. And this current battle over the dreamers is not just about dreamers. It's about chain migration. It's about any number of people they can qualify. We're looking at if, if Lindsey Graham and Dick Durbin get the deal that they took to Trump that he rejected, if they get it, and we're going to be back there in three weeks, if they get it, we're talking amnesty for 5 million people, not 700,000, because chain migration is included in what Graham and Durbin want. And we're not talking about teenagers. We're talking about people that are now into their early and mid, in some cases, late 20s. Well, if we're going to give 5 million illegal immigrants amnesty, you may as well count on 65% of those people voting Democrat, bare minimum. And in, in California, if you haven't noticed, they're making a move to grant illegals voting rights by registering them to vote when they get driver's licenses. We have a, for all intents and we've got a mutiny going on over this issue in these sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. And for some reason, there are so many intellectual conservatives who are behind this idea and have been for the longest time calling it comprehensive immigration reform. So yeah, those of us who are a little older than 24 are 30 with what we've lived through, we have watched the dissolution, we've watched the attacks on the country and on the culture, and nobody's fought back and find it or somebody is. Our objective is to stop the agents of destruction. We don't have time for purity. But you know what? There's a bonus going on. Because the guy who is pushing back and stopping is implementing more conservatism than any elected Republican since Ronald Reagan. There's all kinds of added benefits happening here from an impure, imperfect, so-called rhino conservative. There's nothing that can make you 18 to 24s become 40 overnight. There's no way we can provide you years and years of experience you have not yet lived. But you're going to have to trust some of us. You haven't been alive long enough to witness the assaults never ending on culture and the leaders of conservative movement for I don't know how many decades now. You have grown up into a culture that you think is normal and fine, which is the result of decades of assault and attacks 
and it it features a history that you're naturally going to make fun of because it was a history you weren't alive. We all use our own date of birth as the beginning of history that's important to us, our historical perspective. But that's why I wanted to talk to you. So I'm still going to on Friday. Now that I've spelled all this out, I'm going to ask some of you 18 to 24-year-old conservatives, and I hope some of you are in that group that hates Trump. I want to hear why. And don't worry, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to insult you. I'm not going to do anything that you think happens. There's no raised voices. I might be incredulous at an answer here or there. But it's going to be a learning trip for me. So we'll plan on that on Friday. I'm making it part of Open Line Friday. Right now, I have to take another obscene profit timeout. 